welcome back to my channel. My name is Rebecca, aka Vegan Bodega Cat, and today we are going to do a follow up video, kind of, to one of my most popular videos. If you are a regular watcher of my channel, you probably actually haven't seen it because it's not a food video or a vlog, which is the kind of content I usually make. It is a review of the ordinary, slash, like just me talking about my shitty skin for a little while. And while most of my videos receive somewhere between 5 and 12,000 views, as of recording this video, my review of The Ordinary is at, I think, three quarters of a million views, like 750,000 views, which pff, blows my mind. Because this video has so many views, I get DMs three or four times a day asking me for an update and asking me if The Ordinary ended up helping my skin over time and whatever happened to my mouth bumps and etc etc. So instead of answering each of these questions separately, I decided to compile it in a whole video and just do a skin update. I hope this answers all your questions. If not, feel free to ask questions uh, down below in the comments. I'm pretty responsive. First, a really quick overview. I'm gonna show a few clips here slash photos of how my skin looked in the beginning of December 2019, which is when I started uh, using The Ordinary for the first time. I wanted to switch over from Osei because I wasn't seeing much changes in my skin slash uh, Osei is very expensive. It's like $60 for a, a face wash. I heard of The Ordinary in early December, I think, or maybe late D November, and I heard that they were really good quality and that they're very affordable, they're vegan, cruelty-free, all that good stuff. So I decided to get a whole skincare routine from the people who worked at Desium, which is the store that carries The Ordinary, and follow that skincare routine for a whole 30 days to see if my skin made any changes. I bought a ton of products, I think maybe six or, or more, and only ended up paying $23, which was, wow, such a great deal. The Ordinary is known for being incredibly affordable, but yet pretty high quality, and it definitely was true. At the end of my video, there wasn't much of a change to my skin. Some areas of my skin saw a little bit of an improvement, while my main issue, which was around my chin and around my eyes, basically looked the same, and I was getting a little bit frustrated. So I did something I'd been avoiding because it's expensive and I eventually went to the dermatologist. The dermatologist diagnosed me with something called perioral dermatitis. And while perioral dermatitis just means like, you know, aggravated skin around the mouth, um, it has a specific cause and I have to go back a little bit to explain. Around two years ago, I saw some like weird red bumps around my nose that was probably just like skin irritation or whatever. I went to a regular doctor and showed them my face and the doctor basically said, okay, well, it's an infection. It's either bacterial or fungal. So I'm gonna give you a bacterial cream. I'm gonna give you a fungal cream. Use both and it'll eventually go away. A few days afterwards, while I was using both creams, I realized that the antifungal one was the one making my bumps go away and I assumed that it was a fungal infection. I used that cream, the bumps went away, I was all happy. The problem was every time I stopped using the cream, the bumps would come back. So I thought that I was dealing with a reoccurring fungal infection on my face. And I really didn't want to go to the doctor again because I don't like going to the doctor. So every time it came back, I would use the cream again. And this happened for a whole year until I used the whole entire tube of cream up. Oh, and over the year of using the cream, the bumps got like bigger and bigger and bigger. Like it covered a larger section of my face every time they came back. So in the beginning, they were just like around my nose right here. But then at the end of December, 2019, as you guys saw, it was like up my chin, around my eyes. It was not a good time. So when I went to the dermatologist, I basically explained to her that I was dealing with a reoccurring fungal infection and I showed her the cream I had been using. And she was just like, you're not dealing with a fungal infection. What you're, deal what you're dealing with is is perioral dermatitis, which is caused by a withdrawal of the steroid cream you've been putting on your face. Turns out the fungal infection cream also has a really, really, really strong, strong steroid in it. And my skin was experiencing really bad withdrawals every time I stopped using the steroid and it would make the perioral dermatitis worse and worse. And she said the only way to deal with it was to stop using the steroid completely and that my skin would get a lot grosser before it got better. And I was kind of scared because as you guys know, I do a lot of YouTube and my face 
is on camera a lot. I did a bunch of research on perioral dermatitis and I found out that it can be caused by many things including uh, prolonged steroid use on the face. Prolonged steroid use on the face also uh, results in thinning of the uh, skin on your face which is why my dark circles around my eyes got a lot worse over the past year because I was eating my skin away underneath my eyes and I just didn't know it. Ah! But there can be other things that aggravate perioral dermatitis such as using makeup, using heavy creams, using most face washes, um, using any sort of balms or oil on your face, and parabens and shampoo and lotion and fluoride and toothpaste. And I was like, wow. So what I did was I stopped using anything with fluorides and parabens in it. I stopped using any sort of heavy cream on my face, which was counterintuitive because the bumps were itchy and I was packing on like super heavy duty creams just to keep my face from like feeling that it was cracking. It was like really an uncomfortable feeling when it was dry. And when something's dry, you wanna put lotion on it, but apparently lotion makes it worse. So I was like, I was very frustrated. What the dermatologist did was she prescribed to me uh, two creams and a antibiotic. One of the creams was Axone. It was just a general acne medication. And honestly, I'm really upset that I took her recommendation on that acne medication because I'm 99% sure she just prescribes that acne medication to all of her clients that she can prescribe it to because she like gets kickbacks from it or something. Because I do remember going to her for a completely different thing years ago, like five or six years ago, and she prescribed me the same acne medication and I did nothing back then. And this time when I used it, not only did it do nothing to help, it actually made my perioral dermatitis worse. It made it drier and flakier and grosser, so I stopped using it, which sucks because it cost me like $65 or more, I don't remember. The other cream she gave me was, um, I actually forgot what it was called. But when I did my research on it, it's used to treat perioral dermatitis, and I think it helped a little bit, but after a while, I just stopped using it, and there was no change, so I don't know if I should have bought that either, right? It didn't make it worse, though, so there's that. But it did also cost me a lot of money. The third thing she prescribed me, which definitely, definitely, definitely helped, was an antibiotic. Now, I was initially nervous about using an antibiotic because um, I mean it kills all the bacteria in your gut and gut bacteria is healthy for a healthy you. I generally don't like to take antibiotics until I, unless I need to but with all the research I was doing it was really hard to get rid of perioral dermatitis without antibiotics so I decided to bite the bullet and take it. I was on oh here it is I was on 150 milligrams of doxycycline for two months. I was on it for one month and then I went for a checkup and she said that she wanted to put me on it for a second month just in case it came back. So I said yes and I was on it for two whole months. That was the main thing that took my perioral dermatitis away. Now from the research that I've done, um, it, it often comes back. So I've been off the doxycycline for two weeks now and it's not back yet, so we're just crossing our fingers that it doesn't come back. But I've heard that it does come back and hopefully that doesn't happen to me. And I'm doing a few things to try to make sure that it doesn't and I'll explain that later. One of the frustrating things about perioral dermatitis is that most facial cleansers and moisturizers will make it worse. And I couldn't just not wash and moisturize my face for months. So I did a lot of research. I found like a bunch of dermatologist websites and I read articles on perioral dermatitis that was written by dermatologists as well as just some personal blogs and stuff written about dermatitis. And I came to the conclusion that the following few products were safe to use on my face and to the best of my knowledge, they didn't hinder the antibiotics taking the perioral dermatitis away and over the past two weeks they haven't been causing more to come back. I feel like at this point I should definitely show you my face. I should have done that earlier, but here's my face now. I am wearing a little bit of concealer, um, cause again, the thinning of the skin underneath my eyes. Uh, but my skin is totally clean, so I'm just gonna scooch up and show you guys. So I don't know if you can, is it focused on my face? Oh, there it is, okay. So um, I have like a few bumps, but these are just like regular pimples. And honestly, if you guys see right here where the perioral dermatitis used to be, it's nothing. And over here, I just have a couple scars, which like, no, don't sweat about. On my forehead, I have this one bump, but that's honestly because I picked at a clogged pore too much and that was stupid of me. 
and over here I have a little bit of concealer but as you can tell there's like no bumps no bumps around my nose a little bit of scarring no bumps the perioral dermatitis is gone let me show you the products that I was using while I was on antibiotics and the ones I'm currently using as well so for the first month I really wanted to put the bare minimum on my face like the absolute minimum okay and one of the things that I kept from The Ordinary was the moisturizer. The moisturizer actually did a really good job, and from the research that I did, hyal hyal I can't English. Uh, hyaluronic acid is actually pretty good for perioral dermatitis, so I kept this in my regimen, and as far as I know, it did a really good job. The only other thing I was putting on my face for the first month is a face wash, and for my fellow vegans, no, it is not cruelty-free. It is Cetaphil. But I do believe that there is an exception when it comes to medical stuff, and for me, this was a medical decision. Once it's done, I do plan on going back to the Ordinary Moisturizer, because I think that it is gentle enough, you know, so that it won't trigger the perioral dermatitis to come back. But while I was really fighting the perioral dermatitis for the first month, I decided to use this, which is, and I did so much research, the only face wash that dermatologists recommend to use while you're dealing with perioral dermatitis. Like literally just this one. So I had some mixed feelings about it. Obviously I would rather it was cruelty free, but then again, antibiotics isn't cruelty free either. When it comes to medicine, put yourself first. That is my opinion. So for the first month I was only using Cetaphil facial cleanser and um, the ordinary natural moisturizing factors and only like barely like the tiniest amount just enough to make your skin not feel like it's gonna crack off because even with a mild moisturizer like this you risk irritating your perioral dermatitis at least from the research I, I saw uh, so I used just barely anything in the second month I started to use this it, it is also from the ordinary it is the niacinamide I can't English and zinc zinc seems to be a really good natural remedy against perioral dermatitis and niacinamide not Niacinamide, 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 niacinamide um, helps a lot with redness and irritation. So incorporating this into my routine in the second month also was super beneficial. After the two months was over, just because I was using super mild things on my face, I noticed some just dead skin on my face, and I started using this uh, Body Shop Vitamin C once a week just to get some of the dead skin off just because I just wasn't using very strong things on my face and again, there was like just dead skin on my face and it was annoying. The only thing when using vitamin C, at least from the research that I did, is you just shouldn't mix vitamin C and niacinam <laughs> niacinam <laughs> niacinamide, niacinamide, niacinamide. So yeah, you shouldn't mix vitamin C and niacinamide. So I would put this on before bed and if I were to use this, it would just be in the morning, so like, I just never mix them, no big deal. And that was it, right? Two months, skin is looking like this, it's been good. I deal with a tiny little bit of normal clogged pores, a tiny little bit of normal acne caused by me picking my face. It's always my fault, I'm really bad at not touching my face. And I went back to the dermatologist a third time, and she wanted to put me on a retinoid. I have mixed feelings about this, right? She gave me a sample of the retinoid that she wants me to use. It's called Altrino, right? This is a little sample of it. I used it like three times. I don't want to use it for a few reasons. Number one, I'd rather not continue to put strong things on my face slash not cruelty-free things, you know? Once I finish this, I'm going to go back to the ordinary uh, face wash because I liked it and it was also pretty mild. So that's the first reason I don't want to use it. And the second reason I don't really want to use a retinoid on my face is because if you use a retinoid, you have to use sunscreen. And, I, okay, I know everybody wants you to use sunscreen on your face, but I just... I love sticking my face in the sun. Oh my god, I love sticking my face in the sun. It makes me feel so alive and amazing. And on top of that, sunscreen gives me the greasiest, grossest skin. And maybe it's just the one that has been recommended to me, which is this one by Supergoop. Right? I used this one um, for like at least a week after I used the retinoid. And my skin just looks disgusting with or without makeup. Without makeup, it's like even worse. I just look like, you know, an oil slick. So maybe I just can use a different sunscreen. I don't know. I just love putting my face in the sun. And I feel like if I use a retinoid, I can't put my face in the sun. I don't know. 
disregard the whole sunscreen thing. Sunscreen is good for your face. I just have issues with it that I'm currently working through. That's just another whole other issue all by itself. So. I hope that answered your questions on my skin. My opinion of The Ordinary is that they are an amazing, wonderful, beautiful company. I will continue to be using their moisturizer. I will continue to be using the niacinamide zinc, whatever. And once my uh, Cetaphil runs out, I will continue to use their face wash. They are affordable. They are good ingredients. Even my dermatologist like praised The Ordinary when I brought it up, okay? So even my dermatologist uh, gives the, the Ordinary her seal of approval, so I do really love them. I would incorporate more of The Ordinary into my routine if I wasn't afraid of irritating my sensitive ass face. Uh, so if you need slash want to try different products from The Ordinary, I definitely think you should. Just considering my issue with my face right now, I'm not going to. Maybe later when I like learn more about my skin and learn more about products and stuff like that. I think that covered all the questions. I'm really happy with my face. I know that I still have a little bit of like breakouts and stuff like that. And honestly, I don't give a shit really because it's my own fault again. I'm touching my face. I'm a happy, happy baby. If anyone knows how to regrow the thin skin on your under eyes, then please let me know because um, I definitely damaged my skin using the steroid, but I really didn't know any better. Uh, that is all I have for today. Like if you like, subscribe if you want to subscribe. If you want to follow me on Instagram. Oh, hold up, hold up. Can I just say, the amount of people who commented on my Ordinary Review video and told me to give up dairy and my skin would become beautiful? in dairy in almost five years bruh like my username is vegan bodega cat vegan also the ones that told me to give up gluten and the ones that told me to give up soy I understand that you know sometimes what you eat has a huge effect on your face actually not even sometimes often what you eat has a huge effect on your face but considering i've been dealing with shitty skin for a long time i have been down those roads i cut out gluten for a while i cut out soy for a while i cut out sugar for a while it did not have an effect on my face so if people could stop insisting that if i gave up dairy my skin would be beautiful that would be nice okay that's all i have to say for today like if you like subscribe if you want to subscribe if you want to follow me on instagram where i post every single day i'll put my instagram right here and that's all I have for today. I will talk to you next time. Goodbye! Shout out to all my patrons, but especially my bodega bosses and my OG bodega babes. Jessica, Christina, Marlene, Lucia, Alex Creates, Alan, Michelle, Laura, Kaylin, Marielle, Alex with Planet Earth, Nicole, Juanita, Emily, Jenny, Marcia, Charlotte, Gemini, Curtis, Stacy, Janine, Michelle, Eduardo, Chloe, Erica, and Danny. You guys are the absolute best, and these videos are made possible with your support. If you want to support me non-monetarily, then just stick around and watch another video. It shows YouTube algorithm that you're liking my content.